All those wonderful coral islands of the Pacific and Indian Oceans are all going to drown from sea level rise. Actually, no. You've seen it a hundred times in the media. Drowning island nation, this is how a Pacific atoll dies. Now, I'm going to explain about this broken science, but I have to admit that some of the publicity stunts are pretty funny. Like the Prime Minister of the Tuvalu making the point for a climate conference, or the Maldives cabinet having a cabinet meeting underwater. Well, I thought it was pretty cool because I just can't imagine our, our politicians in scuba gear. But seriously, coral islands are different to normal islands. They grow like a living organism. And as the sea level goes up, they go up with it. Coral islands or coral atolls are surrounded by large areas of coral reefs. And the coral is made of rock hard calcium carbonate skeleton. Now, when the coral dies, it will often be smashed up by waves and make rubble and sand. And some types of fish, like these parrotfish, well, they eat the coral and, well, they poop basically coral sand. In fact, they poop so much coral sand that it is estimated that 85% of the island nation of the Maldives came out of the back of a parrotfish. And the reefs are making their own sand stocks and rocks all the time, and they're growing because of this. Now, it's not just corals on the reefs uh, that make the carbonate sand. There's also crustose coralline algae, which grows over much of the reef. But it's not pretty, so nobody cares about it, and most people have never heard of it. Now, I know what you're thinking. How does the sand travel from the back of a fish and end up making an island? Well, the process starts with the waves. Once the sand and the rubble has been formed, the waves come up onto the reef and by the process of called refraction, which changes the direction as the, the depth of water changes, the waves converge into the shallow areas and it pushes the sand up onto the shallow areas, forming a sand cave. Once the pile has formed, it's uh, often now exposed at low tide and the wind will blow the sand further up the beach, and also as the waves crash down onto the sandy beach, they'll actually push the sand above the normal water level. It's called wave run-up, and if you've been on a beach, you would have seen it. But we need just one more thing to make the coral island. Once we get a few plants to grow on that sand, even for a short period, as the sand blows across the top, it gets trapped by the vegetation and helps the island grow bigger and bigger. The island's basically growing itself. It will never get particularly high, but it will certainly be able to stop itself drowning. And the rate at which they can grow is quite massive. So a coral reef can easily produce 10 millimetres of calcium carbonate every year. And the area of the, uh, of the atoll that's island relative to the amount that's the, the coral is actually quite small. So you only need a small fraction of the calcium carbonate sand production to end up on the island for the island to keep growing. Now, at the moment, sea levels are rising by maybe one to three millimetres a year, so it's way less the ability of the coral islands to keep growing. Now, we've known this for a very long time, and this is where I want to talk about some brilliant science and a brilliant scientist, Charles Darwin, in fact. Yep, the bloke who proposed the theory of evolution while he was sailing around on His Majesty's ship, the Beagle, and checking out the beaks of finches on the Galapagos Islands. Well, he did a lot more than that, and he also wondered about coral atolls, and he realised and proposed that they grew themselves. So it's just amazing that this broken science about the ignorance of the ability to, of reefs to grow has come about despite the fact that Mr Darwin himself proposed the process so long ago. Now, this is all very well and good in theory, but have there really been measurements of coral islands? Are they actually sinking? You'd think by the, all the media that we must have lost a few small Pacific nations by now. Well, the data shows that there's certainly not much to worry about. This paper looked at coral atolls from all over the world and how they've changed over the last few decades. Collectively, the atolls had a bit over 700 islands, of which... More than 500 were completely stable, they weren't changing, that was 73%. While 110 or 15% were actually growing. 81 or 
were decreasing in size. So this is not exactly a disaster, despite the fact that sea levels have increased in this time. Now the data also shows that sometimes the islands are quite dynamic, with parts eroding and other parts growing. But most sandy coastlines always are changing. This is totally normal. But it means that you can almost always find a spot where you're losing sand and then you can tell the world that there's a global catastrophe. So the secret to stopping some small Pacific island going underwater is not so much about carbon dioxide and climate change. It's about keeping all that coral growing and making sure there are plenty of parrotfish doing their thing, island building. And the good news is that corals grow much faster in hotter water, so they can easily grow 20% faster for every degree increase in water temperature. So a warmer climate, climate will make lots more corals, so more smashed coral by waves, happy parrotfish, happy little island builders, and bigger islands.